Hi guys, welcome back to Lao. I'm David. First off, um, apologies for the sound of the fan heater, um, but it is quite cold out here, so I need that on to keep myself warm. Um, you'll notice in front of you, we've got some signals laid out. Um, this is going to be the first video, finally, on, on signalling. Um, I've been working on the signals, sort of behind the scenes, for the past week or so, um, and I've just been madly editing the videos I filmed uh, in and around the time I was doing my uni exams. Hopefully we'll we'll caught up by the time I upload this so I'll just be able to upload stuff as and when I do it. Okay so the first video which is this video is going to go over just some pictures of building the ratio signal kits and a few details about how I built them. It's pretty uh, self-explanatory of the instructions but there were some quirks so I thought I might as well show you some pictures of how I did it and how I modified them to add LEDs. Um, I'm not going to talk about the positioning of them around the layout. Um, none, of, none of the positions were really decided entirely by myself. I had a lot of help on RM Web with people telling me exactly where they should be. Okay then, so I'm going to start by going through how I built the Ratio Signal Kits. You can see the kits I used here, Ratio 467 GWR Round Post Signals. Um, that includes two posts, two home arms and two distant arms. I also made the ratio 468 round post bracket signal. I'll go through how I made that, but I didn't actually end up using it on the uh, layout as I'll explain uh, at some point in this series of videos. Um, I also built the uh, ratio shunt signals. These are just standard BR um, shunt signals ground signals so this is ratio 465. So starting off with the ground signals because they're the most uh, simple to build you just basically follow the exploded diagram it, it can't get any simpler. So the main post and the lamp just glued to the base uh, then I added the uh, counterbalance arm which is actually what's linked to the signal wire um, as well as the uh, lens shade at the back that hides the uh, hides the light from the back painted that all matte black with the airbrush then I came on to do the actual disc itself that is the signal uh, this took a bit of work with some masking tape and a lot of uh, retrying to get the red stripe on as best as possible and then a few dots for the lamps there and that's just glued on to the main assembly the next stage then was the uh, actual signal arms so what you're provided with in the kit um, is it, per kit you get one normal post which will take either a home arm or a distant arm doesn't really matter which is which one you choose uh, it's the same build method but they also provide you with a taller post which has two sets of lamps and two mounts for a home and distant on a single post which was actually quite common but I didn't really need these so what I wanted to do was make another of the sort of normal height posts so to do that I cut out the lamp um, and the mount and I also cut a big chunk out of the bottom of the uh, post which created a signal the exact same height as the uh, other two that I'd got from the kits. The final signal there I just cut out the lamp I didn't cut out the section from the bottom and this means we've got a nice tall signal that can be seen at the bottom of the incline. Okay then, so the next stage for me was to incorporate LEDs. Now you don't have to do this, it, but it adds a little bit of interest. So what I'm using here is surface mount LEDs. They're just uh, cheap ones that I got. Uh, I think they're from CPC and they've just been sat in a bag in my electronics drawer. So I thought I might as well use them. The uh, wire I used soldered directly to the LEDs is actually motor armature wire. It's a good source of almost free uh, enameled wire. I did look at buying an actual roll of enameled wire and it's about £20 or something but I had a broken motor from an old mainline loco sat in a drawer and I just uh, sort of unwound the armature wire and it worked perfectly well to power the LEDs. So to mount them all I did is slice the uh, lamp the plastic lamp in half to get a flat surface to which I could 
uh, super glue the flat LEDs and then the wire is just very carefully super glued down the back of the posts it doesn't really show up now they're all painted and everything and it's not terribly noticeable next I just uh, added the ladders and the sort of safety rails as described in the kit as well as the bases now these are going to be buried under the ballast so you don't see them but they just help support the signal the next stage was then to make the arms now the arms themselves come with uh, the lenses in the spectacle plate are just plastic and you're expected to paint them and obviously I'd gone to the trouble of fitting LEDs so what I did is used a soldering iron actually to just poke a hole through the where the lenses should be then I filed it out with a round file and it actually came out quite nicely with some perfect round holes there to fit lenses I then painted the arms now these ones I did by hand uh, with some masking tape later ones I did with the airbrush and they came out quite well To make the lenses themselves, I had initially thought of using clear plastic painted with uh, glass paint, but that didn't really work out too well. I couldn't think of a way to cut them perfectly round and glue them in place. Uh, and then my dad actually suggested just using glass paint itself, which is quite thick, and just sort of putting it in the hole so it makes a film across the hole and dries hard to actually create a lens. It's a similar way to how you can actually make windows um, on small buildings and stuff just by suspending a clear liquid over them. That worked really well for the red lenses. The green lenses uh, not so much. The blue glass paint I actually had to mix with some PVA glue to get it um, to get enough surface tension for it to go across the hole and that sort of stopped it being so clear. Um, so that's really that for the the build process to mount the arms they do provide wire uh, and just following the instructions you snip a small section of brass wire put it through the holes in the signal arms and through the holes in the posts and that creates your little pivot and then later on um, I added lengths of wire that go between the spectacle plate and the uh, counterweight lever at the bottom of the signal and that allows for operation later on but I'm sure I can show you that in a later video I'll just skip through here the uh, junction signal as I didn't actually use it in the end but this is a much nicer kit it's very slightly newer tooling I think and it actually comes with lenses in the pack basically follow the instructions here um, went together quite smoothly I painted all the wood up nice fit the LEDs in the same way and hid the wires down the back of the post you can see they came out really clearly all in all I was actually really proud of this uh, kit it looked really good you see here I painted the arms much better this time with the airbrush they came out much smoother I would recommend if you do have an airbrush it's a much better way to paint the arms uh, if you use Tamiya masking tape and you can see what they look like uh, at the end I'm not going to use that junction signal so it's a little bit of a waste uh, I had hoped to use it but where I want to mount it on the uh, embankment it is it'd be really hard to get the servos to actuate it and it also ended up directly above a baseboard uh, frame so it's pretty impossible to get it to work but I might use it at some other point or I, or I might uh, eventually decide to mount it in that place on the layout but for now we're just going to skip it okay then so that was how the kits were assembled and you can see they're just sort of resting on the layout at the moment just loosely um, in their vague positions and I've been sending uh, photos of them to RM Web to get people's opinion for the exact positioning of the signals so what I'm going to do just now is take you around the layout and show you the, I th hopefully, the final positioning for all of the signals. Okay, so if we look down at the station, you can see the first signal we have is at the end of the main platform there. 
and that's just a normal home signal um, and that releases trains from the platform allows them to travel into the next block which in my imagination um, goes towards Horse Hay or Cately Junction um, so that signal there just releases trains from the platform it's just a simple home signal or stop signal if we look down here if we look down here there's an identical signal which is another home or stop signal for this platform and that releases trains through here so this protects not only does it protect the um, the next block on which is towards Buildwas and, and the power station in my imagination it also protects this point work here and the sidings so we can use this signal to stop anything and then make shunting moves um, I could go ahead and add some more signals around here and make it more complicated for shunting moves but for now we're sticking with the bare minimum so we've got this nice stop or, or home signal here for this platform and then looking around the point work here we've got a lot of shunt signals now these are actually tiny um, at the moment they're just sat there I need to work out where they can go so they don't foul any of the coaches um, and I should do that uh, hopefully after tomorrow so I'm getting a, a new coach tomorrow which should be quite it's quite a long coach it's a long Hawksworth break so that should give me my definitive answer for where these can go so basically we've got for each point there needs to be two shunt signals um, for each direction so for the crossover it's quite simple just one at the uh, blades of the point and when it's horizontal you're on the main line when it's diagonal you're crossing over and then the exact signal mirrored there for this point coming this way for these points here uh, for this point here sorry going into the siding we've got this little shunt signal here and that stops anything exiting the sidings from the engine shed and, and from the good siding if this point is set incorrectly and also if this what is going to be a trap point is set against it my trap points won't be operational and neither are my shunt signals they're just dummies but on the real railway that would stop anything uh, going across this trap point if it wasn't set correctly or this point here now the shunt signal for entering the uh, siding obviously the main line here travels this direction coming, coming along here but you'd need to reverse back so you need a little signal just to allow you to know which way this point is set when you reverse so that's what this shunt signal is for ideally it'd be on the left hand side of the route but obviously there's this point work here so we've got it on the right hand side and uh, this is exactly mirrored over here so we've got this signal here which shows which way this point is set when you reverse back into it and uh, this signal here provides the same function as this one so there will be a trap point going here the signal will protect that trap point and protect anything from moving to the main line so that's all the shunt signals they're, they're the most complex ones really to understand and describe the others are seemingly relatively simple okay so moving on to the uh, nice long curve over here we needed a signal to stop things on this line coming here so where the DMU is there as that comes round to the track we want to be able to stop it so it can't enter it can't enter the station if there's something at the platform or if there's any shunting occurring so it would be warned back down the line and it would approach and come to a stop here where it can see the crossover and see this signal and then the signal box would uh, clear it like that and off it can go initially I thought the signal should go here um, signal should really go on the left hand side of the line they refer to but in this case um, for sighting from round the curve it's gone across both main lines to this embankment here it might even end up further down here if I trim these trees back a little bit and that just allows it to be seen really easily 
all the way across the curve from quite far away. That's what that home signal there looks like from the side you'd view it from. So say I'm just going to move the DMU, it would approach and, and wait there by that signal or perhaps a bit closer to it. You get the idea. The next signal, if we just pan around here, there's only actually um, six main arms on the layout, the rest are shunt signals. So we've got another home stop signal here, um, and this is for anything coming down the incline. And this signal here is what the box would use to tell them if this point is set for them to come down the incline. So if this point's set against them, they'd have to wait on the bridge here where the track levels out. There's also going to be quite a comprehensive um, catch point here which will design and implement so this signal would warn against that. Again that's going to be a dummy catch point, it's not going to do anything except look prototypical. Okay guys thank you so much for watching, uh, feel free to like and subscribe, I am approaching 400 subscribers which is absolutely incredible. Um, so you've just seen how I've built and modified the uh, ratio signal kits and then I've discussed where they're going to be on the layout. I have completed most of the work now on the signals, I'm just editing all the footage and trying to get it uploaded um, and then I can crack on with other projects on the layout. In the next video I'll show you how I built the uh, dummy catch points as well as the uh, start of the sand drag at the bottom of the incline. That should be a relatively quick video and then I'll show you the basics of the Arduino control system for the servos and hopefully then I'll be able to show you uh, an overview of how they were installed and made operational. Okay, thank you so much for watching, I'll see you next time.